Hey, Mike here. LM Studio has had a lot of updates recently. One of the more notable ones is Google's new Gemma to be instruct, and that's what we're going to be testing today. Now, if you follow the channel, you will know that I have this LLM test that I run for different models. Currently, it is terminal based. I will show you how it works, and we will be doing the test today, but I have been working on a streamlit version of it so that it's just more streamlined, no pun intended, when showing the results and the generation quality of the models that we test. But anyway, without further ado, let's turn on the model. If you head over to LM Studio, you're going to see a lot of new updates here, specifically when it comes to GPU acceleration. You'll have a little new menu here. If you do want me to dive deeper into these details, do let me know in the comments. We're going to select Gemma IT 2B, the 8-bit quantization version of it. We're going to have the Google Gemma Instruct preset here and reload to apply changes just so that we have everything synced up correctly and last but not least start server perfect so now we are back into our little terminal here now the reason i have this opened up in vs code is because well you'll see in just a moment let's do rpm which is run python main i have that aliased and there we go we're starting the generation right away you can see here let me open up this side by side preview with you i'll let it answer first and then i will go over what all of this means and okay perfect so that's the end of the llm response heading on back up here we are told which model we're testing so all of this is automatic you don't have to input the name of the model or anything like that it grabs this from the inference server that we have set up and as you can see here it organizes everything pretty well it does the version of the test so let's look at the llm test here for a second as you can see here, version 1.0, that's exactly what is shown here. And then this version 1.0 folder will hold all of the model names that we test under version 1.0 so that we can always know which models we've tested through which versions. But anyway, that's just a neat little detail for you to know when it comes to organizing all of these results. Let's take a look at what happened here. So we generated the response to the first question. The question being, what do you know about the Obsidian note-taking? app provide a quick summary in markdown format showcasing your markdown knowledge the length should be less than two paragraphs of text there are a few things that i like to check for here number one does it give us a good approximation of what the obsidian note-taking app is how much does the model hallucinate when it comes to the answer? Number two, I want the quick summary to be in markdown format, which that we can see right off the bat is already fulfilled. So that passes that piece and then showcase your markdown knowledge. Again, in my opinion, it does just a fine job. And then last but not least, the length should be less than two paragraphs of text. That looks about right. So in other words, I will give this a pass, which is a Y, a yes. We move on to the next question. So here the question is for it to convert this plain text note into a well-structured markdown document. Make sure to keep all the text as is. Don't add or remove everything. This is just a formatting job for you. Perfect, it's done. And let's take a look at how it formatted this. So in blue here, we have the question portion. And again, we have to make sure that we are paying attention to the initial ask here. I've specifically told it to keep the text as is for it to not add or remove anything. And yet it has done that, unfortunately. One thing I can see right away is it added this line here. Sure, here's the markdown document you requested. I found this to be very frequent with Gemma models. It tells you, sure, here is this, or okay, let's do it. It kind of talks to you, even though you specify it not to. But apart from that, it instead of using the underline here, or the underscore, so that it's italicized text, it made this text bold. Now, one plus that I can see is that it did keep all of the text word for word the same. So that is a very nice bonus. But unfortunately for me, in my own personal taste when it comes to LLMs, I don't like this response because it did not keep the same formatting. So I'm going to put a N for no. The next 
question is just to create relevant links. The response should look like this. Here's a better visual representation of what the response should look like. Relations and then, you know, up to 10 different types of relation links. Let's see what the answer is here. The answer, again, a lot of pros, a lot of additional notes. I did not request additional notes, nor were additional notes part of the examples here. There's no additional notes here. I specifically tell it, here's an example so you understand the style. I tell it that this is a high quality generation example. I give it two examples actually, and yet it still does not do anything right really. It does have the double brackets, but there are no quotation marks around it, so this wouldn't work if you tried to put this into Obsidian in the uh, front matter. So yeah, this is yet another fail. Here, I'm just asking it to create an Obsidian data view script, and oh, it already finished the answer. It didn't make a data view script at all. It just told me this script combines multiple conditions using the where clause. Okay, so this is just nonsense, really. I set it up for success. I added a lot of examples within the question portion. You can see here QA, 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 Q, and then I'm asking it to give me an answer, just like here, just to follow this same set of logic and all it does is just give me three back ticks and this sentence so yet again this is a fail we're going to put no for that and the next question here generate a title for the document all i'm looking for is this kind of format it should have a date and a title unfortunately it does not do that it just gives me a header two for some reason and then it says this title accurately portrays the main idea of the note which this is not a title i'm not looking for this generation i'm looking for something way more simple just a single line and if there is a date which there is within the example that i wanted to generate from then that's how it should look but yeah another fail here here we have it generating a response to the email create an email response to a potential collaborator asking for feedback on a new product idea the email should be concise engaging and include a clear call to action then i provided with the email and now here is the response that it has generated so it says dear rob thank you for your enthusiastic feedback yada yada your insights okay i'm looking for the call to action let's see here i would love to discuss this venture further with you and explore how I can contribute to its success. Please let me know when you are available for a call or meeting. Thank you once again. Okay, so yes, this passes this specific question. I will put a yes because we do have not only a high quality email, but a high quality call to action. All right, so that marks the end of our little testing here with Gemma 2B. The final grade is two out of six. It only has two correct out of the six questions we've asked it. Now, personally, I would not use this unless I had a very low end machine. If I had, let's say, eight gigs of RAM and an Intel based MacBook that's, I don't know, five years old or something like that. Same thing for Windows or Linux. If you're running on a low end machine, then yeah, this is the best you can do for a local LLM solution. It's not absolutely terrible. It doesn't give you insanely incorrect or gibberish when it comes to the responses, but it does not follow instructions as well as a 7B model would. Now, if you would like to see a competition between the Gemma model 2B, the Stable LM2 1.6B, and Microsoft's Phi 2 models, all of them are around 2 billion parameter models. Let me know in the comments and I will do a three-way competition all in one video with these lower end or lower parameter models. All right, so that is all for today's video. As always, thank you so much for watching. A special thank you to all of my patrons, both on Patreon and on YouTube. Remember, ask away anything related to productivity, note-taking, artificial intelligence, and of course, Obsidian, and I will reply to you as soon as possible. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.